Oh, is that meant to make us act better or something? No, uh, this I'm, is just. I'm gonna say the word. Court, Guys, right? we need to get into the. <laughs> I'm gonna say. I'm gonna, gonna say. say recording what word? Because it's just gonna get worse. Say it. What word? I didn't. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right. Well. I can't believe Shane won't. won't went around just spraying the n-word and then goes okay guys let's behave i'm gonna start recording now oh dude it was worse weird, than it was a strange thing to do yeah i know okay, sorry it's guys weird. just the dm's uh power you know can charlie come yeah. back by the way okay he can. i'm already back that's good <laughs> yeah you can i was, I was word testing that with, word kill. i messaged joe i'm like hey did you ever could you come back like i never i've never tested it you know like don't feel, don't feel I, like I'm trying to be mean to you or something. I wasn't trying to see yeah, you out or like, I, just, I, I just, I heard deed like. Yeah, because <laughs> like I kind of banished you and then I forgot for a little bit because we were kind of no, in the fine. middle. And I'm like, ah, you'll, I'll remember at some point to bring you back. Um, but before we do your guys' lovely summaries. Of what? Hey Shane, I just have a single question. Uh oh. What, what is a building that we all met in that we were all told to go to? That was the city hall. Alright, perfect. That's yes. Um two updates. Uh officially now, I have nerfed uh perception checks and insight checks. Those are all um blind rolls now. You can just start spamming them in the chat so you can see for yourselves. Um I will be the only ones to see the outcomes of them. So they're not technically being nerfed. Um it's just like it makes no sense for you to like fail a roll, you know, and then it's like, oh, well, I failed, you know, type of thing. Like you shouldn't know the outcome of a perception check type of thing, it, yeah. especially with an insight. Sure. It's like, oh, well, clearly he's lying, but you shouldn't know the roles. I should be able to just describe it to you. Um, that's that's all that there is that um, as I hear all the dice rolling in the background, the controversial update that I'm expecting fights over. I'm just gonna send the link uh, already just to get this started. <laughs> um, Maxwell's Manual of Malicious Maladies, a lovely name. So whenever one of you has dropped to zero HP starting from now on, there is going to be a punishment, technically a punishment. Um, depending on the damage type that is done, Foundry will automatically roll from a fucking giant um, roll table um, that's on that PDF, and it will choose just kind of like a, an ailment, I guess you can call it, just like an injury, you know, as is in the a title. Lingering injury. A lingering injury from Maxwell in his manual. Um, Who is it, Maxwell? I don't know. It's just some fucking Reddit. <laughs> I can't say the next word because that's a game <laughs> word. <laughs> I'm being a better person. Um, mm -hmm. no gamer words for Shane. Um, Shane was about to say a gamer word? The F gamer word. Shane cannot, oh, say, Shane, Shane cannot say any gamer words. Um, thank goodness. My transgendered sister says the F gamer word a lot. Oh, well then I can say it then. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, to like fix these, it's not like you can just drink a potion and it goes away. You can't just heal it. You have to go to an actual like a doctor, you know, type of thing. What um, is this for? I'm sorry, I was gone for a second. This is whenever you get knocked out. Um, this is just to encourage you guys to one, be a little more strategic. Um, two, I'm just going to just drop the CR of like everybody you guys go up against, just so it's you know. I'm not encouraged to try and knock you guys out to make things harder every single fucking encounter because fuck D and D combat. It is so. You can good. you can melt our eyes, Shane. You can actually melt our eyes. It's <laughs> I one can. Of the thing. I know. I've read through them and they're all wonderful. It's gonna be fun. I don't have any eyes. <laughs> um, it's gonna put. Uh, oh, <coughs> oh, oh, something came up my throat. <laughs> Jesus fuck. <coughs> <coughs> this vile. Um. There's, <laughs> there's going to be more emphasis on milestones. They're going to be harder. The side missions are going to be a lot easier, though. So there's going to be more spiking of fetuses. Um, we love that. And there's going to be more opportunities for you guys to fuck around to avoid combat, like John skipping an entire session. Um, what? That what? That you you don't want that to happen? Oh, no, no I'm just joking. 
I was going to say, okay. Yeah, I mean, I can just make us sit here through another 50, uh, you know, initiative combat if you want. We, yeah, I mean, if you want to keep sitting through D&D &D combat, that's fine by me. Okay, we can do that. I'll, okay. What? No, no, no. Ah, all right, okay. You know. <laughs> You're just mad about guidance. <laughs> Pissed. But I did send some homework for you guys. I know you guys don't like homework. I don't remember any of this. I don't remember homework. Charlie. Good homework? Since you started. I'm doing homework. Oh, the summary. All right. Chapter Good. one. Chapter one. Chapter one. Let's all remember what happened these past almost a year now. I know. We're come, We're almost wow. on 20 years. <laughs> Hold Holy up, shit. when is it? In three it's in sessions? It's in Foundry. Uh, oh, okay. A little bit over a month. Uh, twenty so, July 27th. Yeah, which I guess will possibly be Joe's campaign. I mean, Wednesday. I mean, yeah, it's not like we're actually going to um, play on that I don't think day, we're going to be doing my campaign tons and tons and tons of times in a yeah. month. Yeah. I figured. I mean, gas so, is almost five bucks able... now, Joe, and I live like an hour away so as many times yeah. as you want joe just you know <laughs> and you work at home and you don't pay rent <laughs> you're fine yeah fuck off Shane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually fuck you for actually making me like maybe think about like i used to drive for, like an hour for, there was like, a D &D second every weekend you let me get to him for a second <laughs> <laughs> joe i am also fine with you hosting D's D as often as you want yeah, so I mean, I might do some, like, it, it really, it depends. I'd like to do a lot of stuff in person, but I, I mean, if we're going to do it in person, then, I mean, it's going to be somewhat focused for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not that we get, like, you know, I don't really expect anything different to this, but last time I did in-person sessions, I would have, like, seven hours set, and then we'd play for actually, like, two. So I just want to avoid that. <laughs> But um, yeah, we can we can talk about more days and what to do, and once we kind of get a beat of things, you know. Yeah. Figure. Sorry, I'll let you start, Charlie. No, it's no worries. I need to figure out what I'm even <laughs> he saying. He still got to write stuff up. Dude, uh, yeah. I I completely gave up. I had one sentence, and it was, we all met at the redacted because I didn't even know what the f where we even met day one. <laughs> all right, so we'll take it from the top. If you start reading word for word, I'm skipping the Santi. We were tasked with fine. No. <laughs> um. Episode one. <laughs> the Phantom Menace. This <laughs> uh, Instantly I woke, copyright struck. I woke a massive migraine from a past night after being robbed by two bugbears. There's so a knocking at my door. I slowly got up, winced at the pain, and started walking towards the door. I looked back and saw my blood on the wall, but figured I'll clean it up later. No one's here. I answered the door. There was a little red rat with wings holding a little scroll with a red wax seal on it yeah. and it seemed to be glowing I crack open the seal and all it says is we're interested in hiring you come to city hall I'm like alright we'll be better than this dealing with the uh, fucking bugbears that rob you Make my way over to City Hall. <clears throat> Meet up with a bunch of other... Um, how would I put it? Bucketheads? Uh, and you sit in on a meeting with... A demon. Can't remember his name. I know if it's Katrina, though. Um, so... Sit on a meeting, they tell us 
what the job sort of entails, the sort of contract work, whatever, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to say, hey, we have this first contract for you. It involves finding this lost lady's dog. But it paid good money, so I wasn't going to say no. We made our way over to Lurking Jennifer's. Uh, oh, wait, no. I can't remember what her name was before Lurking Jennifer. But we went over to no, Jennifer's no, house. Jennifer, yeah. Uh, just to see what was up, we investigated the property, saw some weird signs of possible other people living in the same house, not really, we found some fur, but alas, um, we actually ended up finding Rosie, I know. Didn't wait. We didn't find Rosie, but we confronted the old bitch, in which ended up being a hag in disguise, and we slid the hag and took Rosie home with us. I fucked that one up immensely. Um. After that, we uh got a new dog, got paid. Actually, I don't even think we got paid because we sort of killed the person that was gonna pay us. But we go on to the next assignment. Which involved just some protection for a half orc. Goes by Green Darby. He's the head of a Solomon family. It was just a business meeting. We just needed to sit around, make sure nothing went south. But when the meeting time came, I saw Hagen, my old housekeeper slash father figure, caught me off guard. But I didn't pay too much mind to it. I uh, sat and drank with my newfound friend, Anna. I don't know where she's been lately. <laughs> <laughs> Something happened there. I don't know what. Awkward. I wonder. I wonder, huh? Yeah, I wonder what happened. I guess we'll never uh, know. <laughs> All right. So. Interesting. It's all right. Just one less redhead out of Shane's life. Thank God. <laughs> Thank exactly. God. All right. Um, we learned our meeting was uh, full of gambling of blood pits, and um, the Manetti family wanted to in on the betting, but the Solomons weren't going to give them a single inch. Um, but after the meeting was over and adjourned, uh, we got paid, and then. I saw those two motherfucking bugbears that robbed me. We showed them that's never right to rob Minetti. And yeah. Why does it say sorry, Isaac? Oh, well, when I started writing these, I was writing them from a general perspective of one of you guys, and I'm not going to go back and rewrite them, so. Got it. All right. <clears throat> Then, the next task that we had was an off-record assignment. Um, uh, record was submitted by a uh, fraternity of order from a dude named Tao Zadul, a member of the Church of a Chosen One. I'm not one for churches or religion in general, but according to Shayu, his brother, Rur, kidnapped his child. Um, our boss, uh, seeing us as an opportunity to learn more about the church and figure out what's going on, because no one knows anything about his church. I think they're a bunch of whack jobs and white robes that just worship their own thing. Who knows? Honestly, I think they're quite racist. <laughs> um... Church but while the <laughs> <laughs> um, God damn it. Huh? Sansi, can you just DM already? Jesus, <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> um, we went to uh, Depression Street, and uh, inside <laughs> Rur's home, we found a multitude of things: a doll of a lady. 
Jesus fuck. <laughs> I think Maya's using the microwave again, huh? No, that's not that's not Maya. That's John. what's wrong with my mic. <laughs> right, I think I it's better now. On. Yeah, you're good. Better. Okay. Um, so searching through Rose home, we found uh, Doll of a Lady, which is forbidden contraband, um, and some other notes about a man named Auscar, which used to be part of an old faction that is no longer around. We thought, for the most part, he was dead, but uh, we actually ended up tracking him down, and um, he told us how to get inside the temple, which was Vidal. Um, without any hesitation, we went through it. You know, we're in, this is our third job, and so far everything has been a walk in a park, so... Let's say that this one wasn't going to be one. Um, but when we entered, we found ourselves surrounded by a church of chosen members. Uh, we sat down uh, with some weird stairs, but uh, eventually after some time, Rur popped out, gave a little speech, and said that he was going to take the child to the mother. We don't know anything about this, uh, but <clears throat> actually, we do know something about Mother. She's creepy. We don't even know what the fuck she is. Uh, there, we broke into his room. Right now, we convinced him to help, uh, or we convinced him that we want to learn more about the church. Got access to his room, closed the door behind us, or tied up, gagged him, you know, BDSM type shit. I'm not into that, but some people are. Um, then, we went down into the basement, fought a couple rats, I got beat the fuck up by some random thing with a bunch of hands and flesh. Uh, we sort of locked the door after that happened. And, um, yeah, we found the child, and after that, we started receiving weird visions. But Anything else? I was gonna say after uh, after those visions ended, we uh, awoke in our sleeping arrangements, and uh, <laughs> apparently the Lady of Pain massacred everyone that was in there. Main thing to take away from Chapter One: Introduction to Sigil, Introduction to the Main Plot Hook of the Campaign, Santi, Chapter Two. All right, All right hold on. Character here. Chapter 2 begins with another visit to the Cloven. With the familiar faces of our sodding party, Vilviron, Katrina, a mysterious new child, Seronik, whom we saved from Where's Aldul, and of course Ratfink. We were rewarded for our efforts from our previous mission and tasked with finding the source of the Cranium Rat. Before setting off to do this, we naturally set a warehouse of vampires on fire at the request of Green Darby, then came home to rest. The next bit is a little confusing on account... <laughs> Hold on, let me see here. The next bit is confusing on account of the baby started glowing in the wee hours of the night, and then I suppose the party thought it the natural course of action was to bleed onto the baby, but lo and behold, we were all then transported to the Prime once again. Here we learned that Prime time is much faster than Slat time. It had been a month for Ilro since we last visited. Then Ratfink brought that bloody annoying skull to watch the child. Didn't care for that. Then we set out to help the Mercy Killers track down a Githyanki fugitive in the Great Bazaar named Pinor. Being hunted for her involvement in the mass blading caused by Rerzadul and his devout followers. The mission was a failure due to Persephone letting Pinor go because she hates gold and all things fun and good. <laughs> During this excursion, I also learned of that scoundrel piece of shit posing as a Goblin King and gained my most trusted follower, my dearly beloved Trash Heap. Ellen then joined up with, then joined up with us courtesy of the Cloven and we tested her ability and loyalty as we went to solve the mysterious voices and nightmares plaguing the denizens of Governor's Mile. It was a weird, pervy wizard named Lifid, trying to get cool with the Doom Guard. So we killed him, and the precious goblin was in turn burned alive. <laughs> Upon return to the whale, 
Ellen found some stupid stone disc left by the con that apparently teaches you secrets of the universe, and we once again spread blood onto our child. In parentheses, this party's way of maneuvering the world is strange. <laughs> we returned to the Prime and found Ilro planning to move to Inut's capital to present his research findings to the High King. Finally, we returned to Sigil and went to the Blood Pits, where we all won individual battles and a group rumble with various beasts, my favorite. While celebrating our spoils and watching the final fight between Hector and Barglora, a damn vampire showed up and attacked Hector. We fled, got attacked by the Chosen on the street and in our home, pretty usual stuff. Shields Adul was trying to steal the child when we returned home, but we, along with her ghost mother, stopped that from happening. But we still managed to spray her with blood, only to watch Ilaro resign from his job as an Inuitian lawmaster and focus on being a single stay-at-home father. We awoke to a clean house, thank you, Dustman, and good news that Hector had stabilized in the prison. Deciding as a group to return to the cranium rat problem, Rot led us to his church of Morgion, where we found hidden tunnels bringing us to the trash warrens, the heart of the quote-unquote dead economy. We soon found ourselves face-to-face -face with Farad, father of Anna, Seer of not much due to being blind. He informed us of the rat's nesting place, the wardens of thought, and the ever-raging war between cranium rats and an undead army led by the silent king within the dead nations. Contemplating the unimaginable hellscape we were about to enter, we decided at best to get some rest first. Right, anything, that is chapter two summary. Anything else good, sir? Uh, that's it. All right, main thing to take away. You guys bonding with the child, figuring out things within Sigil, uh, getting some milestones kind of gathered, some like little plot things that you guys still kind of have. Um, I know I didn't update these, but you still have the um, Panor one that you can still chase, um, thanks to J fucking Jonah. Um, King and Rags is still, uh, that milestone's coming back if I haven't put that back out there. Um, so, you know. Uh, all that, and mainly just sending you guys underground, preparing you for the chapter three. Who is John? Me? And I didn't know those guys were going in character for this, so mine's I'm, Morgan. I, I'm pretty sure that was just Santi. He sent. Uh, what'd you say you wanted to do it like a campfire? Like if we were sitting around a campfire, <laughs> and someone was like, "Slat, what uh, what happened in chapter two? He pulls out a book. <laughs> yeah, he pulls out his book <laughs> from a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> he has like really detailed, nice handwriting. Yeah. He just gets in that twenties on all intelligence <laughs> checks. <Yeah. laughs> uh, pulls out reading right. glasses. <laughs> Got all his goblins and everything, taking notes for him. <laughs> chapter three. The thought. We start this chapter with the intrepid adventuring party resting down yet again at the whispering well. Before they knew it, their found child, Saranet begins to glow yet again. They are transported back into the past, in the prime dimension, meeting once again with the wise Illero. Our party tried to inform him about the sorrowful future of his country, but some force froze them and prevented them from understanding. Our group is then sent back to the to Sigil. As they go down for a rest, Isaac, the group's handsome resident inventor, Decides to sneak out. The rest of the group, having caught on to his plans, to take the booksome tavern waitress Drusilla out on a date around Sigil oh. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot about this! Yeah. This was the best thing ever. Oh, I loved it. The next day comes and both parties enact their plans. While the eventful day, the band of the Whispering Whale crew versus Isaac almost managed to ruin on his date on multiple occasions. Isaac somehow managed to impress Ursula and return back to the boat to good night. The next day, the group took off into the undercity of Sigil to continue the hunt for the source of the Cranium Rats. They encountered many a rat foe down there, including the rat's dark general, Mantok. They were able to fell the Rat General, 
wrought iron, picking up a new book from his corpse, and then continued on their way into the dead nations. There, our party was able to prove, as well as ally themselves with the skeletons of the dead nation, who served the mysterious Silent King. The party continued their push towards the rat's nest, finding many art magical artifacts, as well as the tomb of a being called Nameless One. The group then made their final push into the den of the rats, where there they confronted many as one. After escaping underground, confronting many as one, they were trapped in the sewers, even deeper below the city. The party decided to make their stand. The group fought bravely, with the fight drawing on and the many as one appearing in a new form each time more powerful than the last. After a while, the many as one took on its true form. Just as a deep fog formed through the chamber, where our party saw the past, they received a shocking revelation about the Crime Lord Farad, who is actually the old factor as Balthasar Thames, in a connection to their good friend Dakan. The group made one final push to defeat as many as one, where then they managed to defeat deal it the killing blow, brought to you by the cunning and beautiful Isaac. And this caused it to erupt in a massive energy. Before them, where the many as one once stood, was a set of ancient stairs that seemed to go up on forever into infinity. The group decided to go up the stairs for quite some time, where eventually they came to a door. Inside that door, much to their surprise, was the adult version of their ardent child, Serenik. They were briefly able to to talk to Serenik, learning brief about her upbringing before it was cut short and they were thrust back into the present in the sewers beneath Sigil, where they were able to find a gift waiting for them from the late Balthasar Thames. Anything else you would like to add, good sir? That's about it! <laughs> Main thing to add, uh, DM note, um, Basically, you guys going underneath Sigil. Um, something to note, too, um, that maybe I haven't done too good of a job um, explaining that some, when you get mazed by the lady, that's like chunks of the ground coming up and her sealing you away. And over time, too, as Sigil changes, like the city itself gets buried underground. So it's like history itself getting buried underground, too. So this is like you guys going underground and finding out, you know, your guys' own history too, history about your guys', um, you know, Dakon, stuff like that. And especially like Saranik, like uncovering that as well. So chapter th three, yeah, was basically you guys going down, taking out this giant rat abomination, fucking grossness, discovering all these things that are setting up um, stuff um, that are going to be coming up. Um, Chapter four is not Jonah, Joe, because I know Jonah mm -hmm. got the, oh, Joe, you do not right. need to read everything that is in episode 15. If you want me to do 15, I will summarize that very quickly for you. Oh, no, I kind of got that, actually. Okay, because I know, like, I, I was thinking about just going in there and just, like, cutting a lot of that. <laughs> no, I mean, just I was reading through it, fat, and I was yeah. like, I was like, there's a lot of fat in here I don't have to go through. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so chapter four, bitches. All right, so the cranium rats, the many of one, all of those guys, they're created by like the collective. If you remember how that thing that like they were talking to us and all those little rat voices, uh, the collective is pretty much just an el illithid elder brain, and it was forced out of their they were forced out of their homes by the Church of the Chosen, which is why they were underground where they were. Uh, we talked to Hargrim after we beat those guys about getting on with the Silent King, and he was like, oh, he's dead! And that's probably why they were so quiet. Uh, according to Hargrim, you could hop on the throne and you could toll the horde, but nobody wanted to do that, so we didn't. Well, I mean... Uh, we talked yeah. to Dakon about him <laughs> yeah, being in visions of the own planewalkers, 
and Guildhall, and he was like, oh yeah, I was mazed at one point, but I was chill with the nameless one, and it turns out, like, you know, there was some powerful condu research conducted on the nameless one, then people made Ambrosia, which is like this dr like, drug? In quote marks? Yeah. If that's fair Generally to say. Generally speaking, yeah. You could yeah, that them. makes people into what's known as true planeswalker, and that's pra practically like having a backup drive for your soul that's stuck in an infinite reality called the infinite staircase. Uh, I'm smart, huh? And then uh, the nameless one was like this fucking, you know, he, as I said, but he used to be sweet on this this girl named Fall from Grace. You know what I mean? Uh, Isaac upgraded the decanter of endless water and saved the dude who was always on fire, ruining that bar's name. And... Uh, we used the Bronze Sphere to get that vision -y because, uh, fuck Farad. And we never gave the Bronze Sphere to Farad. We saw a vision of some freaky shit, and then Takan came up to us, like, after we got home. You know, we saw, like, we went to bed, and everybody saw this weird-ass fucking vision. And then Takan was like, oh, yeah, there's some new prime plane that opened up and ooh it's fucked and ooh people got taken away into it and ooh it's not good and we were like okay well let's go visit isaac's family instead and then we had really bad conversations with isaac's family and then we retreated uh we hung out with green darby after that and then we were told like oh yeah va vampire sucky sucky boys are like you know fucking doing all this weird shit and we want to get rid of them and fucking isaac's brother was like taken away while he was trying to do a fight and shit like that i think that was before this but yeah that happened uh and we kind of figured out where they were kind of making all the flesh golems and stuff and like the little pocket plane thanks to some sleuthing you know and fucking gave that info to green darby and he was like oh shit yeah we should fucking raid that shit fuck these bastards so we raided them and it went awful <laughs> and we fought Astaroth through the Lugosi, who fucking almost killed all of us. And I, I just, I put in quotes, oh fuck, we should run. I'm running, fuck this, as a as a reminder of what I said as soon as, like, fucking Charlie instantly went down. Um, we almost all died. And you lost thankfully we were able to cut, I lost a hand. I have that as a note in here. Um, we <laughs> cut the fucker's head off, thanks to hold person mixed with slat godliness <laughs> so, like that was fucked that was so goddamn close um and then the thing turned into a big ass fucking monster which chased us and we were all like Ooh! and we ran out we got wild. fine that was that was fucking wild um i got my hand thanks back thanks to the smart smart brothel for nerds uh fall from grace was like oh poor baby and healed me <laughs> uh, we then went to Persephone's place, which had major grandfather vibes, but the daughter wasn't getting married, so I guess you know, it loses points. Um, old man Minetti wanted to stop a gang war and the vile blood shit because it's like, oh, it's fucking annoying and it's fake Ambrosia and it's shitty Ambrosia is because it's fake. It's not even good. So we went to go deal with that stuff because everybody was like, okay, we'll we'll stop fucking dealing with each other until like, you know, this shit sorted out. And we went to fucking Yarnum and it sucked. We went to some doctor lady pretty much right away. And she was like, ooh, help me. And we sent survivors to her for no reason, I guess. I mean, just trust her. <laughs> uh, fucking fighting our way through a lot of annoying assholes. We met this old man hunter who was like, hey, you know, and he fucking was just like, I need me treats. I'm just gonna do these things, and then we learned later that there was a way to just avoid that fight altogether. Uh, we fucking whooped his ass and continued on, and then we met Ariana, who was a woman of pleasure, and we sent her on <laughs> her way to the clinic. Then we got to the church, and then we were fucking met the vicar, and the vicar was like, eh, and we fucking whooped her ass. Yeah, that's uh, and then we've teleported back to Sigil or whatever. And the vampire guy kept coming around like, Oh, ho, 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 I exist. Bye bye. <laughs> he did that like three times. Anything else you're going to add, Joe? Uh, no, nah, that's, that's all I got. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, things to add. One, um, you got your hand back by allowing Fall from Grace to destroy the bronze spear. Um, oh, shit. Two, um... The Yarnum plotline for you guys is basically done, though. Unless you guys, of course, want to go back, because, you know, that's still happening. The main thing is to connect that to the air quote one shot. Um, just to drive home the fact um, in your guys' head that one, um, 
Yarnum isn't in wasn't in campaign one. Um it I forget the name. I think I it's Hemswick is in the location of where Yarnum is. So at some point Yarnum gets wiped out, but for some reason you can still access it in Sigil in the future, if you know what I mean. Um go back in time. That's just what I th I'm not saying, you know, that I'm not saying blah blah blah. Um, that will be something that comes up in the Old Hunters uh, stuff. Um, the main thing that I wanted to get out of um, Vile Blood is to start showing off the faction stuff. Uh, mainly the Dustmen. Um, you guys had been interacting positively with the Dustmen before, but then once you had antagonistically started interacting with the Vile Bloods, you saw that they were making business deals with the dustmen you immediately threw away you know your interactions with the dustmen before you know yeah um that's gonna be how it's gonna be going in the future once we start running full faction stuff going forward all the factions are fucking scumbags i think that's a given <laughs> um i think the le you guys I didn't even intentionally do this, but, like, the least scummy faction is, I think, the Fraternity. Ironically enough, because of their name. Um, <laughs> and that's all because of their factal. Uh, Hashgar is a fucking baller and a half. Um, uh, but, yeah, that's Vile Blood. Jonah, I know you've put a lot of effort into this one, okay? Oh, yeah. And I, I know I may have changed it up on you with a oh, little shit. addition. You did add stuff. I know that's like adding half of what's on that list, but um, uh, the floor is yours. All right. So this is a mix of perspectives. It's a mix of like rot at some points. There's some like third person like in campaign. There's some third person out of campaign. It's all oh, good wow. stuff. Oh. <laughs> Waking up in Yarnum, bitch ass Isaac decided he needed to leave and <laughs> go home after a while. For a while. Meanwhile, the rest of us decided to help Baggy, or otherwise known as Bagamemnam, and went back to Jennifer's house. Sneaking past the fraternity of order who had taken over the place, we solved some puzzles that were left behind. It was determined that Jennifer was trying to contact someone called the Crone, and she had located the Crone before he murked her ass. The next day, I think it's the next day canonically, uh, we restored the soul of an inventor slash chemist in the Doom Guard, Tarholt, which was the name of this inventor. He was stuck in his own robot because he's a dumbass. And after we freed him, he said he would get into contact with us when the robot had been delivered to wherever it was going to go. Uh, and then, the day after that, we accepted a movie-based mission for a sleazy member of the Fated, Foreman Bates. He wanted a stolen item returned to him, and so we tracked down the thief. And after tracking them down, we discovered it was at, we discovered that the thief was actually three kobolds in a trench coat, quite literally. We retrieved the item they had stolen, and upon investigating it a little bit further, we discovered that it contained a memory of Bates murdering a hooker. And this led us to eventually turning in Bates. Uh, then we had some episode, or then we had an episode that didn't have anything to do with this campaign. Then we had an episode that wasn't recorded, so I don't have anything to summarize. What? And or it's not posted yet. Episode twenty-eight's not posted yet. From what I can. What? What do you mean? Wait, am I? Am I dumb? Am I? I I don't do the updates for uh, Sons of Mercy stuff. Okay, yeah, but yeah. Okay, okay so you, there's you a lot of there's that a lot of there Sons of Mercy last. stuff uh, that is. Yours would be a lot longer, but we did like so yeah, episode or twenty-seven or what in my brain before was episode twenty-eight. Yeah, the uh, the, the one shots can. That's no, I haven't had a chance to summarize it yet. I do not have the proper mindset to summer to make a summary of that right now. For which one? Yeah, episode twenty-seven. Oh, I, I can just do that. That was um, yeah, the last time. Um, I'll just read through it. Um, that's basically just helping get Joe and Santi up to speed on the Campaign 1 stuff that's going to start coming up full force, um, probably next week, maybe. Um, it, we started, like, immediately after you guys nuked yourselves and that city, um, at the yeah. end of Campaign 1. 
Um, it's basically just seeing um, Jonah's character was the tr not trapped, but kind of um, surprised the group while they were trying to do a mission. Uh, the group said, fuck it, we're just going to blow ourselves up. Jonah was a necromancer. Um, pissed. <laughs> In, <laughs> I don't want to say Jonah's character is an incel, but uh, <laughs> as those characteristics will say. Sorry, Chiron. But, he um, did clone, like, a lot guilt. of copies of himself. Yes. Uh, <laughs> R.I.P. Um, <laughs> R.I.P., R.I.P., R.I.P. Several times over. Um, but angry uh chiron um for some reason knowing where you guys were immediately went to your guys's uh guild hall defenseless started attacking um the guild hall with the resurrected campaign one group um as zombies um thinking quickly you guys as the companions basically fled um out the back um chiron not <laughs> with very many smashing wall spells um, wasn't able to uh, break through the front barricades or anything like that in time. Um, as you guys escaped through the backwoods, Chiron was stopped by a robed figure wearing a owl mask um, named the Retina, a very important figure from Campaign 1. Um, Joe and Santi, he is a Arc Lich, which is a good lich, um, uh, who is basically helpful in supporting the group as they, you know, went about their tasks and stuff. Um, the next scenario after that was the basically the the guy who handed out quests, um, basically the main NPC of Campaign One, Blind King Hophorus. Um, his death. Um, he was trapped during Levis. Oh Jesus! Fucking throwing up all day. I'm sorry. Um, during Levistus's insurrection, Hophorus got trapped in his own library in the capital. Um, as the devils kept trying to pound in on his library, you know, he was able to keep himself barricaded in. Um, after he found out news of all of his friends dying, his kingdom crumbling, and, you know, like, basically there's no hope, uh, he just let the doors open, let the fiends come in, and he was murdered, um... Uh, and the last one is basically the biggest prelude to what is going to be ha Oh, <coughs> I can do it. One sentence, Shane, you can do it. The biggest teaser for the rest of the campaign going forward, um, I think I've mentioned him a couple times. Um, I know John probably saw the slide I had for the transitions I made for uh, Darkwood. Um, but Factal uh, Rowan Darkwood of the Faded around 980, so just before Campaign 1, um, just before the Faction Wars in Sigil, um, recovers a important relic that he believes is the key that will lead him to domination over Sigil. And that's where Chapter 5 ended uh, last session. And I have a question. <laughs> you, you want them? No. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, it's not about the, any of this stuff, but <laughs> I'm going back to the lingering injuries part. Okay. In this, it says it happens whenever there's a critical hit or a critically yes. failed saving. Throw. Um, the Did mod, I turn that off. I do not okay. like the fact that it is RNG based. That is so gay. Got it. <laughs> I'm sorry. That is, uh, that is so stupid. Hmm? What? Yo, dude. That that Come is. On. Come uh, on, man. That is so hetero. I hate it. All this, bro. <laughs> it's oh my god. I know. That's why. So straight. That's why RNG is so hetero. I played enough <laughs> Destiny to know that RNG is just fucking hetero as hell. Um, main things to take away from uh, campaign five, uh, chapter five though, is the Sons of Mercy stuff. Um, same thing as the, um, uh, Old Hunters were important plot stuff that will play a factor into the main campaign, except that it's happening simultaneously as, I think I said that word right, as the campaign. Blah, blah, blah. And that, uh, Sons of Mercy also has a lot to do with John's personal quest. It's just that he is not a part of that Sons of Mercy group anymore. Uh... Oh, and then that blew the DM. Way to leave the homies. 
What? Uh, should we retcon it? Isaac, stay behind. Nope, too late. <laughs> um, speaking of that, John, uh, as we start the session here, uh, make an acrobatics check for me as Isaac. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Everybody, right? Did it, did it roll? It's not rolling. Oh. It rolled. It rolled. What, can, what, what did I roll? Can you guys see that? Yeah. yeah I can see. You got a oh. five. Okay, so it's just yeah, your end, John. That. Okay, I want to restart. I might be making myself dinner because I didn't do that. Joe, if I hear a single goddamn noise come through your microphone, <laughs> you Sorry. know it's coming for you. Dakan was in uh, those mazes for 600 years, goddammit. Um, also, as a you don't know thing, what do, we long, do we get a long rest in? Uh, no, you. I, I mean, one, I'm just gonna say this isn't the Factal's Manifesto. You can't roll again, you son of a bitch. I was checking to make sure it worked. <laughs> um, this isn't the Factal's Manifesto night that I wanted it to be, because I have had my busy season at work, and I've been shitting and throwing up all day today. Yeah, really? no, I figured. I thought that I was gonna maybe do some yeah. stuff, because Charlie was messaging me about it beforehand, yeah. so I wasn't sure yeah. what the plan was. So, when I run out of stuff, Joe, feel free to start doing whatever you need um for your session okay. tomorrow but okay yeah in the meantime john with that wonderful role mute myself real quick um when we ended with sons of mercy last john you had to use that feather to kind of um focus in and teleport yourself out of that scenario where the sons of mercy and um fucking what's his face uh my favorite character one of my favorite characters from planescape um Ooh. Try us. Oh, try us, yeah. Wow. Wow. It's, we're off to a great start, aren't we? Welcome back, boys. Um, uh, as you had used that feather to kind of focus in and kind of choose a safe area, uh, you know, to kind of teleport away to, your people need you. Um, you kind of focused in. You didn't want to choose cursed because you don't choose the ghetto to teleport yourself to as a safe place to go, you know? Immediately somewhere that came to mind would be the place that you and the Sons of Mercy had originally teleported in to the Outlands to, outside of Cursed. The Goblins? Um, shut up. <laughs> you're, you're getting mazed. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Sorry. And it's not like you can teleport into Sigil either, because, you know, rules. Um... So immediately in your head, you think of this shack um, that'll get into more detail in a bit. Um, so for the moment, you feel yourself fade away as the feather kind of um, disperses in your hand each little tiny, um, what would you call it on a feather? Each little strand on the feather kind of blows away in the wind as you, you know, a light kind of begins to glow in your head and things go dark. As you open them, you feel wind blowing across your face in a bright blue sky above your head. You're no longer underneath cursed in its prison anymore. You don't feel that dank, moldy air. Though as you look down, you find yourself a lot higher than you expected. As you drop about five feet down, you oh, see fuck. a large dune, like, shifted. The ground in the environment itself has seemed to, like have changed since the last time you and the Sons of Mercy have camped out in this area. Like, the winds have just blown around the dusty landscape of the areas outside of Cursed. And with that roll of five, as you land on top of this giant dune, you hit, and you begin to tumble down the side all the way down to the path down below. Uh <laughs> Sand, razor vine, brush, you name it, scorpions, fuck it, uh, we're just gonna throw them all, just begin to roll throughout your armor as you go for a tumble, foot after foot, yard after yard, you roll down, down, down as dust just blows in your face. Uh, getting to the end, as it just kinda stands up, kinda starts like brushing himself off, goes, hey, it's sand. It's rough, of course. Gets everywhere. All right, this was a mistake. <laughs> make a make a perception check for me. <laughs> uh, 
I fucking hate you. Um, as you kind of like look around, you can see that the it's probably mostly a factor from the wind, but large dunes have kind of pushed their way across the path that leads um to curse. You recognize it. Um, most of it's covered up. Um, but you know, looking up at the sky, telling from the low morning time of day that it is, uh, you just begin to slowly, you know, shifting one leg in your heavily armored figure as, you know, sand begins to pour out from creases, you know, a little bug here and there. Um, as you kind of glint through your little eye holes, you can see a rusty shack kind of down the way, um, the place that you and the group had kind of come through from Sigil. Um, probably uh, half a mile down the path still. We'll uh, to proceed towards the shack. After walking in the uh, the hot, arid, dry sun for a bit, you kind of feel like a, a sting in your uh, neck. Ah! I'll just grab my neck. All right. As you grab it, um, you just see like a, a little scorpion just uh, sitting there. Just like reeling back with its tail, like looking at you. I was grabbing it and toss it into the sand, saying, "Bastard!" As you um kind of like, like reach on to like the neck spot where you got stung, you kind of feel like, not not to say like, like a weird irritation area along the skin where you got stung. Can I... Thank you, Jonah. <laughs> I'm not going to go into that <laughs> fucking detail next time, though. <laughs> <laughs> the barbules of the feather. Oh, uh... Feathery parts off of the feathery part. Take some of my uh, decanter of endless water. Just take a big swig of it. I imagine I'm pretty hot. Yeah, and then cools you down. Glad I have that decanter, and then kind of pour it over the wound and like, can I like make a medicine check to see if it's infected or? Sure. Yeah. Um, as you pour, like you don't f like the area around. It's not like a big spot on your neck that you feel. Um, it it definitely doesn't feel like an infection. You've cut yourself enough working around weapons and new cardinal that, you know, you've had an infection or two in your time. Um, it's an infection around a cut usually doesn't spread this wide, even though this infection isn't that large to begin with. And when you pour water from your decanter on the wound, you don't feel anything on that area. Like it feels like something's like covering up that part of the skin in the first place. If you know what I mean? Like your skin's like dry on that place. Like it's scabbed over. I'll we'll have to get that checked out when I uh back to the city and I just I'll continue on. Right. Um as you make your way up to the hut, you can see that like the sand has just been beating on the outside of it too. Um it has just like <laughs> this is not the type of place that you would stop middle of the night, you know, road trip, need gas type of place. Like uh, the roof is slanted at a pretty decent angle, basically made out of just wood and rusted pieces of metal that whoever built it was able to piece together. Um, basically the size of a dorm room at most. Um, the front door, there is no front door. It's basically just an open doorway, and the flooring is wood panels, Then every other step, every other wood panel is basically just broken into but it is the same building that you, Hector, and the other Sons of Mercy had come through. The Does it look like it could provide some, like, rest? Um, well, the the hanging sign um, on the top says ubiqui- in common, uh, you can make out from the wear and tear on the sign, it says ubiquitous wayfarer. Uh... All right, I will just. Uh, 
Um, and you can kind of hear like a creaking of like a rocking chair on the inside. I will enter on in. Right. On the inside, the only things you can see are like you again, like you've seen the inside of this room before. Um, it's the same old uh, Gith Yankee uh, female who's just sitting there on her rocking chair. She's so old, you don't even know if she's like alive. Her eyes are open, but they're just glazed over like donuts. Uh, her hair is just like a rotted mop, basically. And she's just so large and just glued to her chair that you don't know when the last time she's gotten up. Um, she sits like directly next to a platform on the ground made out of what's probably copper or some kind of similar colored metal. Um, in one of the lady's hands, she just holds out a cup that just shakes back and forth. And as she kind of like senses you come in, she just like angles the cup a little bit towards your direction. I'll uh, walk on up and uh, toss a drink in. Thank you kindly. Any portals back to Sigil in here? She like tries to twist her head like head to the left and like nod down at like the like the platform, but she just like can't do it, you know? I guess I'll walk over to that platform. As you uh, take a step on it, you can feel like a weird vibrating hum coming from the base. Um, you kind of uh, take a look over at the old lady. And with like great pain, she just gives you like a thumbs up. Not even like a thumb. Like her main fingers can't wrap around and her thumb can't go up. So it's kind of just like a claw kind of that she raises up towards you. Let's do, a, let's do an awkward two thumbs up back as I get teleported. Uh, you don't teleport. You just kind of sit there. Oh. Um. So I'm on like this platform? <laughs> she just kind of like coughs and hacks a little bit. Is there, like, another doorway over on this side? I'll to toss another dink over to her. And you're teleported. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> as, like, immediately as you get teleported back into Sigil at the base floor of the, um, ubiquitous wayfarer you can see people from all across the outlands the plains are coming through different colored platforms um different metals different materials stones um etc um are just coming out through different you know platforms on this bottom floor um mixing mingling um coming out through different sides um you kind of like get as you take a step out you kind of just collide with different people as they're just rushing in and out like you know running into each other, um, not expecting the rush, I guess you can say, um, like an airport terminal, I guess, as just like not being used to just the emptiness of Cursed and immediately being thrown into the hustle and bustle of Sigil immediately. Right. Um, so what I know what ward I would be in? Perception check. It's blind. First, the ubiquitous wayfarer is in the lower ward. The perception check is for one. Um, on this floor, it leads out into the clerk's ward or the lower ward. Um, so it's pretty easy for, you know, clueless people um, to get lost. For you, fortunately, um, you've 
had Hector, you know, walk you through a couple times. So as you kind of take a step out and you get bounced around a little bit, you kind of are used to kind of the color coding on the floor. And as you kind of see blue markings, you kind of take a peek, see them, begin to just kind of trace them and follow them. Um, as you begin to make your way out, kind of following the steps, following the natural flow and progression, you kind of make your way, um, bring your head up, and you instantly collide with what you initially think is like a pole, like a supporting beam on this basement floor where all these portals are. But as you recoil and you look back, you see like a thorn or two that's like in your armor, like a black, like barb, like a, you know, deep thorn. Um, what do you call, um, yeah, thorn when you get it in, I don't know, whatever. Um, anyway. A plant? It's a thorn. No, I'm saying like wood, when you get a wood thing in your finger. A splinter? Uh, splinter. splinter, yeah. It's kind of, it reminds you of like large splinters kind of in like your armor. And you just kind of quickly just pull them out. Um, you see they're kind of like very dark green. I'm in the center of each thorn. It's like black, but as you kind of like pick them out, get a little bit of light on them, the outer layer has like a greenish tint to them. Um, but as you like take a step back and look at what this like wooden beam is, you can see that it's like like a humanoid, a very still humanoid tree person, like a. And as you uh, make a survival check for me. Honestly, it looks like a, like this person's covered in razor vine. Say, so, uh, sorry about that, friend. Excuse me. Uh, you all right? Figure just stands completely still. Doesn't say anything. Um, so does it look like it's a figure encased in the razor vine well like it's just a, like a fig it's pretty tall like six and a half feet seven feet tall um it's just standing like still like it almost statue like and it's just standing there in the center of the room and like you just kind of like ran into it you know it's just you know stand like it's got razor vine like wrapped all around um this person you can't see underneath of it or anything. It's like that dense, covered in razor vine. I try to like stop someone going by and be like, "What's up with this guy?" Uh, yeah. You just see kind of like a. Uh, we'll just say I'm trying to think of the name of the devil. Why can't I think of the name of the devil? Where's, where's John coming from right now? He's coming from Cursed. He just flew out of, um, teleported out of, uh, uh, Sons of Mercy. We'll say a horn devil. Fuck it. A horn devil just stomps by and you kind of like give him a nudge. What's <sighs> up with the, uh, s s spiky fellow here? What's up with him? You've been in the Outlands too long. Must have. Do you mind uh, catching me up and I'll kind of toss him a jink. Keep your coin. Throws you the, the coin back. Don't bother me with dumb questions, Primer. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I was just trying to get caught up. Didn't mean to stir any trouble here. Nothing to get caught up with. Nothing's changed. Nothing will change. Just keeps walking away. Well, it's kind of... Isaac just kind of shakes his head and... Flicks up at, like, the... Fraser Vine... Person. Well... Sorry for bumping into you. Nice to meet you. I'll just continue to walk on out. Make a wisdom saving throw for me. Oh, jeez. Okay. 
father of worms. As we transition to Sons of Mercy. Oh. Uh, John, let me know if you literally, like, can't see your token. I cannot. Well, I mean, like, there is literally no vision. Well, I mean... I can see a faint outline. Yeah, effect. okay, so it works. So yeah. the issue last session was NPC tokens have a vision button, but player tokens don't. Don't know why. Here we go. As all of you um, feel the ground give out beneath you, um, as Triaz opens the portal into Carcery, um, your feet give out in a similar way to uh, Isaac just a moment ago, but you have a lot nicer of a fall as it's just, you know, a foot or two. Um, each of you prepared land, you know, doing your own little superhero poses, if you will. Um, but it gives you a moment before you can just feel the unsettling nature of the plane that you just landed in. As you look around into the cave around you from what little you can see, off in the distance you can already hear a loud screeching noise of some unnatural creature rearing in what sounds like an eternal pain. The walls around you look like a rib cage, and whatever slime is drooling down it, you don't even want to bother thinking. It feels like whatever noises are like the heartbeat of some kind of creature, and you're now stuck in some kind of eternal torment. You already regret coming here, and it's already only been two seconds, but the portal's already gone. You guys are stuck. The adventure continues. Oh, Julius. I, I think you can't see fucking mission. shit down here. What? Oh, never mind. We're not supposed to see. It's like so dark. Uh, Hector will take out his sword and go, Rajang! The darkness violates my NAP! I don't know if it's been said recently, but fuck you. Also, I can see pretty well. I don't know what you guys are complaining about. I can't see fucking anything. Does my character have dark vision? It's fucking. Because you won the genetic game. lottery, you lucky bitch. I have dark vision. Probably because oh. I'm a knife here. That's a lot better. Jonah, you need to be careful. I, I realize that, yes. DM warning. Uh, can you see Jonah? Uh, not past about here. I Okay, not an enemy. I'm just saying more like a terrain warning. I'm just going to throw you back. <laughs> there you go. I realized that once I was about three, once I was about three steps out. <laughs> you guys remember that there's that uh, follow the leader mod? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, how, how do we do that? <laughs> Why am I following seven feet behind him? Yeah, hold up. Is there? <laughs> there's a grid, right? Why are you offset like that? Because <laughs> I'm following seven feet behind Hector instead of five. Alrighty. I think I hit F mid movement. Yeah, but you guys can see that the ground isn't like, like it's like a reddish tint to it, and the walls too itself have like um, it's not sandstone anymore, but it also has like a bloodstone hue to it. Hmm. Is, Obvi uh, obviously, you guys know you're in. Um, no, Trias stayed behind. Well, team, now that we're in a more dangerous place, I suppose I will step up and start helping out. I think we should go left. You're the boss. Well, I mean, you have the light, so... That sounds pretty good in my book. Follow the leader. Yeah. As you go left, um, you can see that there is a pile of large mucus sacks blocking the way going forward. 
green saliva e mucusy sacks. What the fuck? Rockros, do you want to try taking down those sacks? Are we in a nose right now? I. Um. Is it here or here? The DM's also saying you're at the bottom left of the map and there's no way forward. Perhaps we should go the other way now. <laughs> there's obviously no way to go through these. Sacks. I don't know. I, I don't know where you're getting <laughs> that from, information from. <laughs> I think the other way is good. Am I not following the leader here? You're following me. <laughs> You're following me who's following the leader. <laughs> Bye, Ransom Arrow. No. Ransom Arrow, oh, hover over my portrait and click F. Good job. What did you say? Click, just click F on one of us. <laughs> Alright. Following 30 feet behind you. <laughs> That's very specific! <laughs> That's what it is. Move a little bit closer. I think I'm like 11 feet. Move a little bit closer. Uh, okay, everyone stop moving for a second. <laughs> We're moving because John's moving. Hold on, okay! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> this is very bad. Okay. Alright, I am following closely now. Oh, this makes much more sense to me. Alright. We seem Before to be at a ahead. bridge. Ah, perhaps we should cross it. Guinevere, do you mind scouting out a little bit ahead? Alright, I can barely- I can't see anymore. I think the accent's gonna stop being Mexican and start being Puss and Boots pretty soon here. <laughs> uh, I can actually breathe <laughs> pretty far since I actually have dark vision, but I'm just not the stealthiest if you guys are fine with that. Shut up, sound. Is Let's bad. continue. <laughs> Guinevere, if I was your scouting, do you think we should go left or straight? I also don't really have much power left when it comes Wait. to spells and stuff. A very inquisitive question. Uh, um, did we get a long rest in, or are we still going off what we had? Still so going on, have, baby. Um, uh, we, should, we should go this, this way. way. This I way. have. <laughs> Two spells left. I wish greatly to turn into a dinosaur. <laughs> Alas. You want me to turn you into one right now? Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay, right? okay. <laughs> Shane, does there seem like there's a good place to rest here? I mean, you know. Perhaps I can have two wild shapes instead of one. Honestly, yeah. I don't think inside of something is a good place to rest. Okay, That's um, not what your mother said. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. oh, right. Thank you for showing my mom a good time. <laughs> okay, I might have just ruined all of your guys' uh, following, following by doing that, so, sorry. Sorry, I'm following you. Okay, so okay, I click on someone here. As you guys um, begin to enter this area, um, the noise of the screaming begins to get very loud. Um, you aren't able to see too much into this what you can definitely feel um, to be what's opening up into a large cavern in front of you. Um, the lights, the fairy lights that I use to show objects of importance, um, you know, oh well. And what a shame uh, that you can see in areas that you're not supposed to see. But that um, uh, area to the top right, uh, there is like a, what you can see to be a hole on that northeastern side of the cavern um, where above the hole um, is a tunnel going upwards where a beam of light is coming down. Using that, you can see that there is like a large figure uh, right around the center area. What the fuck is the, there it is, yeah. Like right in the center area, you can see the outline of like a large um, string-like figure that is like rolling around constantly, like flinging itself about the this large cavern um, continuously, um, letting out this shrieking noise that is like making pain just ring out um, throughout your uh, guys' ears. Um, this vast cavern that uh, yawns here, um, the ceiling itself you kind of lose um, in darkness above you. You can see rubble and stalagmites um, lie heaped in two sides. Um, let's see. Uh, nothing else to describe. Jonah, can you see anything with that spell you just casted? Uh, not past torch. 
I, I even went in and gave myself like dark vision on my character sheet. And I still... I'm going to refresh quick. No, because that. that won't do it. I have to do it in your uh, uh, token sheet. You should. Yeah. Dark vision gives you 60, right? Yes. Boom. It, it will it work hit a now. Spot yeah. that I'm unsatisfied yeah, it doing. is working. Uh, you won't see it for another 10 ish feet or so. Yeah, there. it definitely hit those. I'm just changing my key point. I am just going to let you actually make a perception check for me. I'm not going to. All of us? Just Jonah. What do you want? I don't know what it was. <laughs> nope. Um, okay, well, nothing. I cannot help you, know, you. Besides the description I gave everybody, nothing. All right, team. Holy fuck! Team, what? Gather around. What do you have uh, to say to me? Guys, can I really quick say, holy <laughs> fuck? We gotta be careful. Is that thing a hairball or what is it? It's a giant worm thing? Question mark. I like think I've heard of these like before. Rolly, it's like a millipede. It's a millipede. Guinevere, get back here. We're having a team huddle. I, it's the great black beast of all. I was just keeping an eye on it. Jeez. <laughs> All right, team. Now we have that giant fucking warm thing ahead of us. <laughs> we can either try to take it out. Uh-huh. We'll try to... I mean, go I silently am around so it. quick. I, I can be there, hit it, and be it back out. before you guys know. I said we fight it. I mean, it's not like we really got too many options here, right? Because I can't really so fight it or die. I do not know how fully to use my character, but I will try my hardest. There's some stuff past it. There's like a corpse. All right. Yeah, let's do it. Let's fight this fucking thing. We should go and spread out as to avoid any area of attack damage. I'll take the bottom. Uh, um, I have very really Because I'm the bottom. <laughs> shit. I will, I'll lead the Holy charge. Red Star Romero, you want to actually? Go actually. I'm, I'm kind of keeping my, my, I'm changing my mind, seeing this thing a little back bigger. Uh, I think we shouldn't deal with this thing, guys. Charlie, make a... I told you about it. Charlie, make a stealth check. Oh, that's right, I have this useless fucking magic item. I think... Yeah. Shane, is that a fucking purple worm? Nope. Okay, I was gonna be like, oh no. It's worse. Oh no. It's worse? I have a... Uh, oh question. no! It's not even from D and D. Um, no, okay. I thought it was gonna be like a from your, or something. from your sick and twisted Ooh. imagination. Uh, Shane, why do I have a, a <laughs> I'm looking at this. Weapons. I'm oh, looking at the fiend, the CR the uh, the game. I, that weapon should work for your class now, Santi. I oh, think. is this gonna be something Are you from about the, uh, the Moonsickle or the Fiend Femur? The fiend femur, I think, is to replace your moon sickle. <laughs> yeah. Interesting, the way. Okay. Yeah. Well, Remember your your, your uh, sickle sucked. Yeah, yeah. You guys said go with the moon sickle. That'll be great for you. Hey, John was the only one that said it. I literally everybody else wanted to. Literally, me, <laughs> dude. I read. I went through all the details of that staff. That is all Santi's fault for not choosing that staff, man. Holy that staff was fucking staff. fantastic. That staff is so nutty. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't even... Charlie failed his stealth roll. So as I'm the uh, worm uh, in the middle uh, is Please writhing rage. in pain, I'm <laughs> um, I can't see shit. Uh, Vrakos, uh, with his uh, large sword, um, glaive, glaive uh, begins to like circle around as you guys begin to get into like an offensive maneuver around this worm that's like rolling around in this like a worm centipede kind of creature um as you guys kind of like begin to circle around this creature Vrakos kind of steps out first into this central chamber and his foot sinks um not into a hard sandstone that you guys have been stepping on but into sand uh his foot sinking away um and as soon as he does that the worm stops uh rolling and just begins to uh, flatten itself and ever so slightly turn and roll into the direction of where Vrakos was. Just move ever so slightly, sensing for where the prey was. Nobody 
Move. That'll be easy for me. I don't even need to breathe. Guys, I can just fly over it. You think it could see me? Why don't you go try? Shane, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna slowly try flying closer to it. Closer to it? Yes. Just to see if it'll like turn towards me. Okay, stealth. Oh shit! I accidentally refreshed. Do I get advantage because I'm flying? Uh, nope. Stealth. Okay. Jesus fuck. I can't even read what's on that dice. <laughs> I God, know it's oh, great, so... isn't it? Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All you, Jonah. As your, you know, wings begin to pick your body up. Oh, you're following it? Okay. <laughs> I will go with you to the ends of this earth. All right? Hesitantly, you just, you know, it's like a mosquito to a human. Except the roles are reversed now. It's ever so slightly. I think it can only detect you if you're on the sand. Good luck, everyone else. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Is there any, like, pebbles or anything nearby? I mean, yeah, you can see, like, rocks all over the place on the ground and stuff. There's can a I... lot of corpses! Can I pick one up and Daddy kind of <laughs> throw it over, like, this direction? Yeah. Just with a, a nice little toss, um, you just... You just see the worm, um, father worm's eyes just jut out to the side. <laughs> and it just immediately shoots out, like, scaring Guinevere for a second, like, oh, fuck. And she just, like, jumps, like, oh, fuck that. Like, throws her wings, like, back, you know, kind of like um, she's in a swimming pool, but in the air with her wings, you know? Just pushing herself backwards away. Hey, do you think Zone of Truth will do anything to this thing? No, As but it, do you have any range attacks? As it uh, dives do. onto the uh, stone, begins to click its mouth and begin to God. like scan around the room. Fuck, that's a pacing myself against the wall because I'm close to it. Pain, where did it go? <laughs> Everybody, get <laughs> Razzle Rose, stop following me! Oh shit, hold up. Nah. Ran Sumero, when did you get tilted? I'll probably still do that. Hold on, let me tilt back. Wait, oh, wait, shit. Wait, I, I, do you not know how to tilt? You, you don't know how to get tilted? Get tilted, bruh. Get mad. Everybody just... I'm... Fan, can Hector I raise my right, spear? I'm... Make a run for it. I'm gonna follow Hector. <laughs> I'm not making a run for it. You guys make a run for it. I... Hector, I have to. <laughs> with you, my friend. Uh, Joe, well, first of all, but as you guys are doing that, Joe, are you, uh... What are you doing, Joe? I see them running. I, as I said, I'm pacing myself up against the wall. The kind of, like, I heard somebody say, it, it hears movement. I know. This is going to be the end of Varen, probably, or something. Oh, okay. As they're Here's booking my... it, uh, Joe is back there. You guys just hear, like, as Hector and Ronso get to there, just a loud oh, no, push comes out from the ledge. Oh, you all the just hear that. as <laughs> a massive beast breaks out from the sand, and you guys just see, like, red, like, hundreds of tiny little blood red eyes like gazing down on the tiny little insects that are you all uh you guys are elevated enough where you know uh hector and ronsa where you guys can book it down where the light source is coming from south uh charles okay. that. what do you think what do you think hector It's only one thing I think, and Hector's gonna- is I'm on like an elevated surface? Yes, you guys, you're not as tall as it, but you're probably like halfway up its height. Alright, Hector's gonna I'm run actually... off, jump with his greatsword, and just try to stab into its chest and like, oh, ride it down. Hell oh, yeah, baby. God damn it. Ship sails. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
fucking bitch, dude. Okay, <laughs> make an attack with Regen. If w would it be possible for him to throw me at its face as he's running at it to do this? Because I'm what I'm thinking is he throws me, and then in midair, I take wild shape. Uh, land on its head as a dinosaur. If he passes a strength check, yeah. Oh. Wait, uh, wait, no, you're small, aren't you? I'm very small, so I'm I'm a ghostwise halfling. Uh, well, the good thing about this thing is that it's pretty easy to flank. Cause it's a lot of space to flank it. <laughs> Throw me like a football. All right, Hector has enough strength. Oh, oh anyway, hey, I'm literally cat. All right, Puss in boot. as I'm chucking ransom arrow into the air. So he can crash down. I'm yelling out to Guinevere and Varric. Get over here, guys! There's a way out! Are we rolling? That's a good question. All right, I think, initiative? I think we're doing this, yeah. I, you have it set up to do you? Like, that's a good question. If anything, I can carry everyone out on my back, and I'm pretty fast. Alright. <laughs> I don't think I can roll. I don't have an initiative on here. Uh, oh, I got it now. Shane, you okay? I'm reading. I only rolled an eight. Are you kidding me? I'm reading its stats. Is it? It's that's not good. Um, Shane's laughing. I don't know what this means. What does it say? Uh, it, message. There are a lot of words that I don't know what this means because I'm using a different system for this guy. <laughs> Tommy, did you say you're a ghost quest halfling? I am. Why haven't you telepathied any of us? <laughs> or have I just forgotten about that? And, uh, okay. I don't know. I think it's because I may be okay. legally retarded. <laughs> did everybody Shane roll their uh... 13 for initiative? A lot of things I'm figuring out. Can't Unless roll actual initiative. Like some so. weird homebrew sub race. Um, Shane, question. Yes. If I'm if I'm being if I'm being thrown very with a very with a high speed by Hector at his face, would that could we say that activates the pounce feature? I'll give it to you. <laughs> Let's go. Does he have advantage because he's also being assisted by me? Uh, no. Ah. <laughs> uh. Um, Can you guys hear any of the Witcher music? Yeah. Yeah. There it is, okay. Uh, that is its default initiative, Jonah and its lair. Oh, shit, okay. So that's uh, kind of like God changed it. I mean, technically, yeah. The, the gods of the game, yeah. Um, okay. I have two bite actions. <sighs> Yeah. I just want to. Sure. I just want to say, what did we say at the beginning of the session? Uh, if we drop to zero, we no, can, uh... not that. <laughs> uh, you said the N word. <laughs> <laughs> for for the record, for YouTube, he did not actually say the N word. No, I said it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, now he's done. Yeah, he's I, done said for. I said it. I said it. Cancel. <laughs> Don't worry, it's Shane can like never be an actor me. now. Thanks, it's guys. Hollywood exactly. career stopped already. The Father of Worms is reminding you guys. I guess this is my fault, too, for putting a high CR into me. <laughs> okay. Now that this is... Oh, yeah. We I gave you guys ample strategic. warning, so you know what? I don't care anymore. Here we go. Yeah, kill us. Fuck. I'll go with Santi first. Uh, no, because he's getting thrown. Wait, cool. don't, don't we get a, a, a round because we, I chucked Ransom Arrow at him? No. My name's, my name's Renoso Arrow. Renoso Arrow? I, I think that's kind <laughs> oh, of just how things are. This thing was not surprised. This, this was not surprised. I think you were just setting up for what you want to yeah. do. He surprised us. Let's get that right. Yes. Shane. Um... What dice is, what dice is, right? is a 31? <laughs> oh no! Go. What dice that's is that? Plus, that's plus 15 to hit. 
Ooh. Oh, cool, cool. cool. All right. And the deck. Uh, I need a deck um, saving throw for me, Charlie. Uh. Oh, it's gonna eat you. Um. Shane, do you think you could change one of my wide attacks to a claw attack? Uh. <laughs> oh, just the name. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's no, they're right through the. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know which one's claw, which one's bite. To be honest. Okay, failed. Uh, if the worm. <laughs> Okay, Charlie. Not get eaten. Are we about to get fucked on here? I need to turn on. I need to read some stuff here. Yeah, we're about to get fucked on, and Shane didn't read the monster stats. Because I don't think he thought <laughs> we were going to actually try to fight this thing. Does anyone have knowledge on this beast? No. Would, I don't think Varen would, would have experience as a what elf with it. In order to strategize. It's big. It's got lightning bolts coming I'm out of it. Strange. It's got blind sight. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, it ate you. Um, did it roll the full damage? No, it didn't. Or did it? No, it didn't. Okay. Uh, subtract that off your health, Charlie. Oh, that's when he pulled a Remoraz <laughs> on them, I think. What is one of the Worm one underground with Marisha? Oh, Worm? Not a Remoraz? I thought it was a Remoraz. It was It was some giant worm in the art. Perfect. Yeah, that's what, that was the Remoraz. I have one of those. Okay. It's gonna they're do like that. one of my favorite monsters to throw at people because they're really... Half its speed, it's gonna burrow underground. Oh, oh. cool. Oh, Charlie nice. is uh, swallowed by it. Oh, so he's dead. I'm not dead. Santi, I'm officially taking out that magma habanero cider. Jonah. I'm excited. Oh yeah, let me know how you. You guys can see as it like, it just like jumps up um, as Ronso like, um, you know, begins to like leap towards it as um, he begins to wild shape. Um, as it's doing that, it just turns and just bites down on Vrakos and just submerges itself. And the last thing you see of it before it disappears is like that little sand trail as it snakes away underground. Okay, I'm running. Yeah, we should probably dip, huh? Yeah, no, fuck Vrakos, he's dead. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie! <laughs> is he... Don't worry, I, 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 can, I, I could... I could get him. Nah. I like how Jonah's calculating. Can I steal this shit before going? Yeah, I was ch I was checking this out. Shit, added to my inventory. Yes, I believe so. I mean, it looks like crack was just got taken underground. So that was it thirty-five. I have twenty more feet. It's in consumables. Yeah, I think I picked up. Right above Bloodfly Charm. I just saw them and now I don't. Oh. Why? What? Okay, yeah, now I see it. I have some Charcoal Charms, a Chalice of Chaos, and a Bloodfly Charm. Cool, um. Let's see, I have 20 more feet. I'm not a fan of this. I'm gonna go this way because it. The... Oh no! I didn't want to go that way. Shane, can I undo like ten feet? Yep. Okay. I wanted to stay outside of the torchlight. Cause now I can use my bonus action to teleport sixty-five feet into dark, or dim. Why are you going away? Ignore that. Because I don't like that. What? That was one of the that was what I, one of the things I picked up. Uh there were um it just got mixed up with your charcoals. I didn't remember if I had the or not.
It is Ransom Merrill. Who is muted. Alright. Sorry, I had to pee. Um... What do we think? Can I tell to see everyone right now? Is that possible to use as an action? What was that? I mean... I think right. we just... Pulled out here. Sorry. Should we... I mean, yeah. Should we chill on, up on this ridge? Maybe I'll just talk to Hector and through Dinosaur. Yo, looking kind of shaky. Renoso, I, I don't speak Allosaurus. I don't know what you want. Ah, <laughs> uh, alright. <laughs> I'm gonna hold <laughs> out on high ground here. <laughs> Jonah, I'm gonna update that think? chalice so it's not a consumable. <laughs> I'm gonna move right right. back. One right there. Kind of hop back. And end my turn. All right, how far can I run? Wait. In your inventory. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 70, 65, 70. I'm running. That's it. Because you said there's some exit up here? Up on this ridge. ridge. Okay, I'm running over in that direction. I should have asked who needs help and maybe gone down so you guys could ride on my back. Yeah, it's okay. I'll make it, hopefully. Yeah, That's the end of my it. turn. Alright. Alright guys, All right. I'm up next. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me see something. Do you think Zone of Truth will help me out? No. Zone of Truth. I'm just going to prepare my attack action for if the worm kind of comes up here again. That's pretty much all I can do. And also shout out Fracos! Guinevere! Where the fuck up? Or Farron! So, Shane, I know I'm blind, but do I see? Can I see inside of a creature? Are you trying to like hit it with your glaive? No, I'm trying to cast a spell. Um, I mean, if you're trying to hit it on the inside with your spell, I mean, you're not gonna miss. <laughs> All right. You're well, in I its mean, stomach. It... Like, I, I mean, it's like trying to hit a like a, you know. All right. I, I just wanted to know because I was technically I'm blinded by it, and all that was just so I didn't see the map. Firebolt! You shoot it out of its mouth and miss. Uh, no, I'm gonna pass. I... I can't target. I'm trying to cast a spell, but it says I need to target it. First. Uh... What? Uh... I'm trying to cast Blight. Uh... It needs to make a con save. I'll make a duplicate. There we go. Uh, can you unwind me so I can see it? <laughs> <laughs> Hold up, I have to move. I have to move the real one now. There you go. Um, can you put it in the light where I can see it? Jesus Christ! <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, can you make a con save? Fuck? What the fuck? Oh, good god. Jesus shit! He's a beefy boy, god damn. I mean, I it fails, but it still does damage. Jesus shit. It fa it fails? I mean, no, it doesn't fail. I mean... It, it takes 15 necrotic damage. Okay. Alright. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Charlie's going away. Yeah, when does he start taking the digestion damage? Ouch. Are you 
that. Oh, is it my turn? No, it's fine. He's just the invisible. Of lambs. Zoinks! Um, I will like. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Fucking don't select that. Um, and. Uh, add. Boom. I think that's everybody. Hey. Hey. No hey. way! Are you serious? <laughs> who wow. didn't? Wait, who I didn't? didn't wow, I didn't get that a is the God best damn. group I thought roll we've <laughs> ever had. Santi, I didn't get a roll. I thought I, I thought I'd be able to make a difference here. <laughs> Please tell me he gets a nat one. Oh, he was so close oh. to getting a twenty-two. <laughs> Oh 16 my god, that's god, nuts! Dude. That's insane. <laughs> All above 20 except your boy. I, I think we might have passed. Right. Um, yeah. you guys can see well. the wor like the trail is beginning to head like this way. Like it's getting close to the surface enough that like you can you begin to see like that semi half circle, you know? Just begin to trail up underneath the surface as it Wait. begins to head towards um like this way. Good God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Farron, look at it. Oh, 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 so nine. Nine. Farron, run. Now. Run. Run. Is it my turn? Uh, it is Jonah's. God, fucking damn it. Stand still. There you go. Alright, that was all of my moves. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I haven't even been keeping track of, uh... Shit. Charlie, I am sorry, um, your die... How many people have casted spells? Um, uh, since the yes. initiative has started, or since the in general, round. I have I, I have. okay. Who so who's casted what spell? I cast I, light. I okay. cast dark vision. What damage did you do, Charlie? You did fifteen, right? Fifteen necrotic. Okay. I'm assuming it's gonna be reduced. I haven't cast any spells. I just ran right away. It's just since since we've started. Cast spell. Yeah, no, that's it. I've just been running since we started. And your your dark vision doesn't change anything. Oh my gosh, Shade has been a little lazy. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, and then I'm just gonna hold a dart for if the worm comes back up. <laughs> a dart versus um, a giant worm. What the fuck should I even do? Let's see. <laughs> How far can I go here? You like that one, Shane? No, I didn't have the right health set for the follower worms. I like that I have four charcoal charms, and they're in a stack of three and a stack of one. My speed. My walking speed, is it 30? Um, oh, 60 feet movement. 
Mm. Should I go down and try and save Varen the Axe Thirsty? No. Can you guys hear the music right now? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I will Mm. do nothing and end my turn. I think you should probably run. Oh, okay. I don't even Uh, know what the fuck's going on here. Uh, big monster. Not good. The big game's scary. The game's, the game's paused. paused. Yeah, I can't move. Alright. Wait, it skipped my, it skipped my turn. God damn it, I clicked the fucking G button. I, I tried, my turn. Yeah, I tried to click uh, gonna, space and I clicked the skip turn I'm button. I'm gonna sprint <laughs> up here and get up here run and away. then continue sprinting. Wait, how far was that? 30? 40. I don't know why I can't go anywhere. Alright, that's pretty much where I can end. I can't even move. It's not your turn, technically, Santi. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know. I was just trying to see if I As, can... As um, Hector is, you begin to like approach up towards the cliff edge. You begin to see the worm... Uh, pop its head back out of the surface and just tower over you all as you begin to crowd over that ledge, beginning to flee over towards that light source um, on the other side of the tunnel. All right. Finally, beast. Face. I will do my multi-attack. Rajang. I don't know. Oh, that that roll of dice. I get my held action too when you're. One of these songs will work for me. I'm a jealous man. I'm just gonna keep going until I get one of them to work. Does an 18 hit? Uh, 18 hits. Uh. And then that's an extra 2d6 on top of that. For fire damage. That's 15 slashing and 5 fire. I'll do my second attack. Oh, there we go. I'm glad I'm 10 feet away. Okay, keep going. Anything else? Uh, nope. Right. That's that's about all I can, all I can do. Right. You charge the beast, slashing into it with Rajang for the first one, and with the final hit, as you scream and try to cut into it with the second one, it just slaps at you with one of its like little tendril claws and pushes you backwards just a couple feet, kind of you know, embarrassing you a little bit as you try uh. and uh, free your ally that's trapped within its you know. Wherever. Well, well, now that he pushed me out of his uh, <laughs> range, I guess I'll take another 10 feet back now that he pushed me out of his combat. So. <laughs> Shame, when he popped up, popped up, I had a held action that I want to take. Okay. Uh, my turn. Huzzah! Nope. Fuck. What about the second one? Nope. <laughs> Okay. Anything else, Jonah? No, that was it. Okay. After seeing Hector, like, you just see Hector get, like, thrown back, and you, like, throw your dart, like, just off into the distance. You he, After a couple seconds, you hear a dink echo off in the cave. All right, uh, Charles. I think this might be it, buddy. I don't know where you... Not... Yeah, I don't know where you are in here. Let me, uh... I don't know where I am either. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Yeah. Oh, you're kind, you're kind of back visible, in the yeah. darkness. So, quick question: You said I'm, I'm too confined to swing my glaive. No, I said that if you swung it, you would hit. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm just saying that. Don't worry about the blind. I think there are other blind issues um, that would come up, but don't worry about hitting when you're, you know, taking that much damage a turn. 
You're also inside of it, so I mean, if you hit the ground or something, you're still hitting in it. Yeah. Yeah. So, cast spell, spirit shroud. Um, so basically, whenever I make an attack, I do an extra 2d8 necrotic. Actually, uh, yeah, fuck it. Armor of Agathis would be amazing here because you're inside of it. I mean, I was. Armor. Gonna, I could have. I could have. Do have it. But. Uh, I should probably should have done that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> matter. Shush, shush, shush. We're fine. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie. Uh, we're gonna do Radiant because this shit's fucking pissing me off. Um, Alright. And then. Hold up. I'm so relearning everything with them. Okay, I can't. Alright, so... Attack of a Glaive. Should I just roll damage? Okay, so you casted Spirit Shroud, right? And you chose the damage as Radiant? Yes. Yep. Um, and I... Should I just roll straight damage for attacking with my Glaive? Or do you want me to make an attack roll? Uh, you can just make the attack roll, and then you can roll the d8 as a separate. Unless if it does it automatically. Uh, it doesn't do it automatically, so I'm going to have to do it myself. Mm -hmm. Does he get advantage for being inside the worm? Yeah, I'll give you advantage. Oh, alright. Kind of hard to miss. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, damage... Then plus 2d8. So we got 10 slashing, 12 radiant, and then second attack. Attack with advantage. And I fucking missed somehow. <sighs> well, I guess I'm gonna be warm poop. I could communicate. Chill. God damn it, I'm trying to comprehend all these damage rolls oh, here. Boy. Fucking give me a goddamn second. Uh, 2d12. Okay. Oh, it also can't regain any hit points. And its okay. speed re is reduced by 10. Um, with that one stab, um, you guys are able to see as, um, Vrakos is able to pierce with his glaive into the side of the worm. Um, you just watch as acid just begins to pour out of the side. Though the father doesn't look, like, bothered whatsoever by this, as you just watch as, like, dark liquid pours out. Um, you can see that there are just, like, holes throughout this worm, um, just scattered throughout the the body that there are just liquids like pouring out of it um like like a water slide if you want to call it that Vrakos just goes sliding out um charlie if you want me to save your character i'm gonna have to knock you out if you do this canonically um sure okay let's do it oh Um, with the corrosive blood of the Father of Worms, um, as you're able to pierce it just enough for you to just grab, um, you know, the hole that you're able to carve with your glaive, um, the kind of like a um, uh, a xenomorph, you know, I don't know how many aliens fans we have in here, but um, just the yeah, just the burning sensation you feel on your skin is enough just to close your eyes for what in your head is forever as you feel yourself fall from the side of the worm and hit the ground um, being pushed a little bit away by that pooling of blood as you know lights go out as the father of worms does not know does this mean he roll on the table uh <laughs> yeah let's do it Roll Shane, the table, it. baby. Um, because it, I manually implemented. Yeah, it is implemented. Actually, did I turn it? On? Hold on. Let me. Um, uh, did I actually turn it on? Because I I had it installed, but it. Uh, on damn it, unconscious. All right, Charlie, I have to re knock you out here. All right. 
If anything, can I just manually do it? Um, hold up. Okay, and then we'll put you back at one HP. Okay. That puts you at ten. That puts you at hundred. One million. Fracas so or that is the same. The lingering injury. Reason down. Selected correct damage type. It was acid, right? Where are you seeing this? It popped up on my screen. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let me double check. Uh, yes, it is acid. Little injury. Ooh. Oh, wow. Oh. Ah. Oh. You were incapacitated. But the thing the is, anyway. I, I don't, I don't breathe. But damn it, Jim. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a blacksmith. Uh, you've inhaled toxic. You're <clears throat> yeah, so it's basically just the description I gave. As you were, you know, fumbling your way out d in desperation, you just kind of inhaled some of that, um, you know, acidic blood getting down your throat a little bit. Though you're undead, so, you know. <laughs> if it was literally any other person, that's probably going to play a factor going in with the constructs, though we can flavor that in a way where you just have to get that repaired. Um, undead might cause a little bit of a... Up. Yeah, but so wait, that, that's Shane, probably the lightest. can you share your system for being knocked down with me? Because I actually like the idea of that, because it, it is an issue for me, honestly. No, that's that's just that um, that Maxwell's... Um... It's based on if you sustain a, like, a critical hit or something. Uh, oh. I'll send you the... I'll just send it in the player's chat. So it's... I just found this... Um, the the way I do it is if you get knocked out, depending on the damage type, uh, it will roll from a roll table a specific lingering injury. Um, and then you'll just have to go and find a way to get that resolved. Um, Charlie's character got the, the lightest um, acid injury, I think, from that table. And he's an undead, so it doesn't even affect him anyway. So, um, you know. He'll probably just be burping up some acid fumes for a couple sessions, if he survives. But yeah. Um. Anyway, it's my turn. Dissolved limb. I actually like this as a table. Holy shit, these are fun. Uh, Santi, I need you to what? make. You rolled a two. <laughs> Santi, I need you to make a uh, constitution saving throw. Alright. My war, this war rolled a 2 and rolled a 21. Constitution saving throw. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so like, right, Joe, in the original rules oh, for the, um... God. The original rules for the, um... Uh, Maxwell's Sansi right there would have to roll lingering injury. Oh yeah, no fuck that. Yeah, it's like no RNG like that is just so gay. Um, yeah. I mean hetero, hetero as fuck. Come on, man. Hetero as fuck. Jane, I can't what fucking. The hell? All right, Santi is Jane also the target. Uh, taking twelve d six. Oh come on, nah. I already. I'm hurt, and now I'm getting more hurt. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, so Allosaurus form is gone, I'm guessing. Yep. Oh, yeah, I'm not dead. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. I um, forget that's... that I'm even a fucking... Oh, God. Now I'm out of wild shapes to use. So that's cool. The father of worms with its long tail just turns and just stabs at Ronso from where he's standing, immediately reverting him back into his halfling form, uh, shaping away the dinosaur that was once there. End of his turn. What the fuck turn. happened there? Jonah. Huzzah! Hits. Oh, okay. Wasn't really expecting that. Doesn't really matter to me too much. Get out of here. Okay. Just the one, uh, 
For you, Jonah? Yes. Alright, that is four acid damage coming back to you as that physical attack just sprays more of that acid blood back onto your body. Am I able to... Um, called? Evasion that? Uh, it is or not dexterity. Back. No. Okay, so that was... Uh, wait, 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 wait. Is it... Um, you're doing bludgeoning, right? Yes. Uh, never mind. I believe punching is bludgeoning. Yep, never mind. Yeah. Um, and then, since I no longer proc... Uh, opportunity attacks... 5, 10, 15, 25, 30, 35, 45, 50, 55. There you go. I'm skedaddling. Do you have any healing spells to get Varakos? Okay. Um, technically, I could try to heal Varakos, yes. Let me I'm see. Not sure if you have like a healing word or. Oh! Cure wounds. Oh. I had something I could have done. I'll come uh, back. I'll come uh, back. No, no. I think I think Varakos is fucked. I mean, I don't. If I go down there, I don't even think I can cast it. I, he would need to be in 35 feet. Yeah. Oh, fuck, I can. <sighs> no, the, don't, you don't worry about it, you're already injured. Barely. I could go down there and save Rakos. I could try. I, 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 got, a, I got a plan. I, I, let me go try to save Rakos real quick. No, just stay there. Stay there. Here, right here. What do you want me to do? Should I hold my action for anything? Better what do plan? whatever you fucking want to do. What's your plan? Can I cast guidance? <laughs> Technically, you could cast guidance because you haven't rolled or anything yet. I don't think that Softy's a spellcaster. He also got sent to the. No, he. <laughs> that. Shane, if you're gonna make rules, he's back. You have to he's do back. It was a joke. Rules. It was a joke. Fuck yo. <laughs> Shane yep. can have fun what? too. <laughs> Joe, no. honestly, do whatever you think is best. Shane, do you think the DM is allowed to have fun? That's no. not how I have no idea what no. your plan is, you and you won't tell me, so I'm not trusting it's a good plan. I was just gonna run down there and pick him up. <laughs> I could use healing word on him. Was that? Is that? Uh, that's that ranged, down? right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, healing word is ranged. Yes. Okay, fuck me not g going down what? there. Yeah, just use that on him. Like, is run to the vent. Wait, did yeah, we skip? Re uh, yeah, Renault Somero should have been. away from Vrakos and then just cast that I, on him. Cause also, a bonus I've action. Been, I've been taken off the. Uh... Yeah, he should be before. Yeah. Near Baron. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, before me, actually. So you should have gone before I even get to go. So Ransom's turn should be right now. The name's Reno Somero, guys, but... Reno Somero. Sorry. <laughs> Ransom. <laughs> Everyone's like, Ransom's gonna do it. The thing. Yeah, Ransom's a good nickname for your character. Oh, I roll for initiative? Uh, oh, I re-roll after the thing? Uh, there you go. Oh. Okay. Alright. <laughs> okay. I will cast Healing Word. At okay. second level, third level, we'll do it. Okay. And I will cast it. Let's do this. Oh, what a shame. Uh, yes. With my fucked I've sustained, up weird... I've sustained a lingering injury. Reason down. Roll on the healing. <laughs> what? Uh, I just said it must have like yeah. yeah. Um. So, can you delete the message yeah, can... or no? So ten health. Yes. Can add ten health. Yep. Perfect. Well, Charlie, I guess you just have to roll another one. You know. Just don't die. Barcos, can you get out of there? Oh, and then also, we'll after see. I do that, I'm going to dip. <laughs> so let me... 5, 10, 
15, 20, whatever, somewhere around here, something like that. I think my, my range is goddamn short. So after I do that, I will end my turn. All right. Joe. So they're up. They're healed. Okay, they're near death. All right, that's everything we can do. Time to run. How much damage was done on the, the worm to make it barely injured? Um, I did a solid... I did 16. Something like that. It's not yeah. even like lost a uh, percent of its health. Brackos, can you get out of there? Doing my best. <laughs> I did all 40 damage to it. <laughs> Brackos, what you doing down there? I'll say, Brackos, you can do it. I believe in you. And I'll cast Leadership. I think you probably might die or something. Um, so pretty much, Charlie, you can add a d4 to... Uh, wait. It's an attack roll. Oh, actually. Shay, I'm a bit confused on the wording for this. On the, uh, leadership? Is it... It's just, just... for attack rolls and saving throws? Does yes. it sustain? Like, does it... Is it a persistent thing? Um, it is just, uh, attack roller's saving throw for one minute. Concentration. Uh, not concentration. Attack rolls and saving throws for one minute. Okay, Long so you can add d4 to you. Attack rolls, probably saving throws, what you'll need it for, but I believe in you. Brackos. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, I'll I'll wait right here to see what happens for. Hey. Oh, give yeah. him, you need light, right? I do need light. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will. Oh. I will. I will say, uh, my necrotic spells felt very powerful around this being. So. I'd say just in general, not around the being. Slay. I have a good one. That's a good necrotic spell. Give it a shot. Well. Alright. Alright. <laughs> so, how, how high uh, is this ledge? You are within attack of opportunity. Uh, action just. Oh. Yeah. Got you. You are not right. restrained and blinded, by the way. Let me remove right. that. <laughs> there you go. Just <laughs> So, you can climb up. Yeah, you're fine. Action, disengage, climb up. How? You're fine. How I you? didn't make the others do any movement. So. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, five, thirty. All right, movement. What do I got? Can I do anything? The three best friends. That's where he spews shit. And just kills kills all of us. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna hide behind you. Oh, shit. Oh. The worm begins to climb up on the edge no. with its little claws closer and closer. And as it gets right up on top of you guys, it, like, as you can see in the image, it opens its mouth and red light begins, like a mist, between the cracks of its, like, hundreds of eyes begins to roll low and you begin to choke on it tendrils begin to climb out of its mouth and reach towards you and as they do light from the outside reaches towards it and touches those black tendrils and burns tss, all over it the creature shrieks and begins to back up slowly and retreat back into the darkness of the cave mm -hmm. disappearing into the darkness Though you can still hear it crawling around, waiting for you guys to come back. Well, let's get the fuck out of here. Officially leaving the caves? Yes. Alright, one out of two items grabbed. Aww. 
Uh, gonna make uh, whenever we do the next encounter a lot harder. Oh boy. Harder. What the f we weren't even able to what? scratch that dude. Yeah, but we were able to get past it without anybody dying. Barely. <laughs> Again, <laughs> like swallowed. the first cave, um, when you guys had first entered through Trias's portal, um, this cave continues um, on for a little bit, though that light source at the end of it um, gives you a little bit of hope. Though, as it gets brighter and brighter, a little bit of dread begins to pick up as it isn't like the warm glow of Sigil's Peak or whatever the sun actually is in the Outlands where it has that nice yellow-orange glow. Again, like the caves um, on that you've been in Carcery so far, it's red and kind of like whitish too, and it gives you just a sickly feeling and a, a rough feeling going forward that makes all of you, you know, keep your hands on your blades going forward. Um, doing anything before exiting the caves? As you get to the cave mouth, um, you begin to see um, that rib cage thing that I was describing earlier. Um, definitely, you haven't been inside of a creature. It's just like something has just been unnerving you this entire time. Describing it, putting it into words isn't possible, really. Um, seeing just the rock walls in better detail now that you all have better lighting. Um, really does make it feel like you're inside of some creature's mouth as the walls really do look like the inside of like a mouth and like that rocky texture especially when put into light looks like sometimes bone peeking out or like like the outer lining of flesh stuff like that um, as you get to the cave mouth um, fog mist begins to roll low and as you've finally reached that like red white light, you guys are blinded for a second as you come overlooking a large valley. Sitting in the center of the valley sits a massive spear with the texture of bone that sits aloft over a churning caldera of black water um, that's being held by immense chains connecting the spear to a ring of surrounding sharp red mountains. Huge bone spurs lance out in all directions from the central spear, which probably measures several thousand feet in width if you guys are probably taking a guess. A single 20 foot wide rope bridge connects one of the mountain ledges some, you know, ways down from where you guys are to the spear from the pit. Cascades of black water churn from the surrounding mountains to plummet into the lake some miles below. Despite how the water seemingly pours into the lake from above, the water level never seems to rise despite how long you guys stare in awe and horror at this image in front of you. Another thing to note, despite all of these demonic fiendish creatures that fly off in the distance, these bird-like fiends, across this bridge seems like a, f like a militaristic force, and immediately you can recognize who these are. Harmonium. A well-armed Harmonium. Not like the Wall Watch, like the reminiscence of a Harmonium long past, a well-armored fighting force of Harmonium, like what you would see um, around the barracks in Sigil. Fresh armor, well-armed weaponry, siege weapons. A lot of them carrying carts, holding prisoners in them as they take them across the rope bridge. You can hear their screams and cries from where you're kind of peeking at them through this caveway. hundreds if not a thousand of them as they escort these people into this massive spear well hector i've got a bad feeling about this <sighs> well it's gonna be your uh 
brilliant plan oh. to get us into there. I'm sorry, I got something stuck in my throat. <laughs> you could try the front door. Hey, yeah, very funny, man. Very funny. Yeah. I think I one of the spikes. So it's pretty much just one rope bridge leading there, right? Yep. And on the other end is the harmonium. Um, like they're not just like waiting. Like, um, they're they're like I'm not trying to say they're guarding it at the moment. They're like escorting like these prisoners in these cages, like on carts and stuff, like into the prison. Like they're not just holding their position, if you know what I mean. Remind me what the Harmonium and Mercy Killer's relationship is. Um, in I... Sigil, they're the big part of the big three. Um, you have the Fraternity, you have the Mercy Killers, and the Harmonium. The Mercy Killers are the bounty hunters. They go and bring justice by hunting down criminals. The Harmonium are going to be like your SS. They are your, like, um, not really secretive, but... They go around and make sure nobody is, you know, um, CIA. yeah, nobody's breaking the the ladies' laws. Nobody's breaking their laws, um, especially in like the ladies' ward, um, the nicer wards and stuff like that. Um, and especially they they're making sure nobody's fucking with the fraternity. Well, team, it's either turn around and deal with that ugly ass worm. Go forward and deal with these ugly ass people. There's a lot of people and only one worm. Mm. I don't know. I don't think you guys want to end up in the stomach like I did. But yeah, that worm is also really scary. I'd rather face a hundred men than go up against that thing again. Does it look like this is someplace we could? We could comfortably take a rest. Uh, like I've said, uh, comfortably, uh, you can sure try. You know what I mean? This is as comfortable as a place that you guys can, as you've seen in Carcery so far. Um, definitely safe from the Harmonium and the Father of Worms, for sure. Um, the natural environment and stuff for whatever section of Carcery you're in, too early to tell. You know what I mean? Um, but this is where I'm calling Sons of Mercy. Alright, well, I'll try to... Might as well just take try to take a long rest. Okay. See what happens. Sorry, I didn't have a long rest. Hey, so... Sant. Hey, Sant, I have a very important question for you. Yes. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> Am I ready? Yeah. Uh, yes. Ready for what? Oh, the homepage. So, last time we saw our goblins. Oh, yes. <laughs> Shane, was I supposed to uh, give make Trash Heap an actual character class now? Uh, no, no, everybody's fine with the classes and stuff for a while. Until we actually get to, like, whenever we're doing whatever the fuck we're doing for, uh... <laughs> I, I mean, six. yeah, I know what we're doing for Gob Team 6. It's just, let's get to that point first, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. I think the last thing that was stopping us before I start introducing what we're gonna do is this moment right here. <laughs> so, um, the last time we met our goblins was, uh... You guys said we're just um, not getting to uh, Rigus, but um, well, yeah, getting to Rigus. You're kind of several miles out on your long expedition. But after kind of climbing up a long hill, you saw the outline of a large figure um, kind of blocking your path. I'm not really noting who it was or what it was until you got to the top, letting the sun stop blocking your view only to see it be a large goblin. Uh, not large in a good way. Uh, sorry, Charlie, but, um, you know. Uh, large and in charge, I guess we'll say. 
uh, but very good with the speeches. Uh, very useful going forward. But now that we have four goblin <laughs> leaders for our up and coming army, um, the four bestest friends that anyone could ever have. <laughs> Yippee! With Rigus off in the distance, sitting on its triumphant hill, standing proud and tall, arm in arm, figuratively, you all, you know, triumphantly walk closer through the farmlands that, um, you know, scatter themselves throughout safely outside of um, Rigus's uh, view. Uh, you haven't seen much of these, you know, uh, raids that this Rat King has been targeting on merchants that have been outside. And it's been kind of pestering each of you little goblin boys, you know? A little worrisome. You, you know, you can take them, obviously, because you're slats goblins. But um, it's just something that's like, well, no fight's better than a fight. Bring them on. That is, until as you all are walking, the final segment of your path. To Rigus, as one last lone figure stands in your way. Santi, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Yeah. I just stumble out confused. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where are you guys from? Who are you? You're all very you are you're all very tall. You're very tall. Uh <clears throat> uh oh, I'm 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 good. I'm good. How are you? How are you guys? Shane is trashy here. Yes, all of you. Uh, at, we're just gonna say yes. <laughs> trash heap is there. Yes. Uh, I said, who are you, Matt? How are you? Oh, my name's uh, my name's Grank. Grank. <laughs> Grank. Grank. It's like, like Frank with a, with a with a G. Dare I ask what yeah, Frank looks like? There. He's 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 short. He's like the shortest goblin. Like he, goblins are usually short, but he's about three quarters to half the size of an average goblin, and he's very portly. He's got so... a big fat gut, and he's and a very hairy chest, and he's got hair that's really long in on the sides and back, but he's completely bald on top, and he's got. Rectangle glasses on his face. This is Danny DeVito, but are, are you no, some my, sort my, of really my ugly name, child? My name's my name's Grant Gavito. <laughs> Grant, so yeah, you can tell he's you can tell he's very obviously on some sort of substance. He's talking very fast, and his eyes are darting to the left and right as he tries to explain his situation to you. And he's very unsightly. You, you look at him, and his his, he's not very much fun to look at. His hair is wiry and it's it's long, and he should just <laughs> shave his whole head because it's not the hair isn't working. But he decides to keep the hair around, and he's he's talking to you guys. Yeah, my name's Grant. <laughs> my name's Grant Gavito. Uh, <clears throat> uh, hmm. What brings you guys out here? It's a, mm, it's not a good place to be, is it? Tell tell me, Grant. Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you, you serve the Rat King. No, I fucking hate the Rat King. Why do you think I'm out here serving the Rat King? No, there's no way I'd, I'd, I'd serve that guy. I'm actually, how, do you feel I was... about, how do you feel about the Lord and Savior slap the Goblin King? He's the one and only true Savior. He's uh, <clears throat> I've been trying to meet him for years. You know, I've known about him. I I was actually, I used to I used to work in Sigil. I was a very uh, successful businessman. I'd buy <laughs> expensive carriages off a of whim. I had to and tell that whore wife of mine, <laughs> she cheated on me, and I had to get rid of her. I... <laughs> and then I left that stupid whore. We're gonna get. I was, a, I was a very successful get... businessman uh, with the Manetti family. I don't know if you've heard of them. I was, yeah, but I mean, as you know, sh there's some shady business, and you know, eventually the collectors started to come for me, so I started blasting. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Took out as many as I could. I decided to flee, and. You know, cower behind someone greater than I, so I've been looking for Slab for, for quite some time here. 
Hey, no. hey, Grant, there's a, there's a silvery thing on the ground under your feet. What is that? <laughs> Magnum condom joke. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I jumped, I dropped my master condom that I use for my Magnum thong. <laughs> Listen, Grant. I have a big cock. I I can see. Yeah. Tap we're, yeah. We're, yeah. We're, we're Slats champions, and we're stop man. And mm. you seem like you're going through some stuff. So yeah, I am. I have two I'm gonna grateful offer, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna offer you an egg in your trying time, and I'm gonna allow you to join up with <laughs> us. An egg. <laughs> I do this to many people. No one's done it to me. I very much appreciate this. Don't worry, Grant. I'll pat him on his back. Yeah. You said it's like a third of his size of a regular... That's like a less than a foot, right? <laughs> he's, he's he, said, he said he's three quarters to a half. He's like a he's, foot tall, if that. He's, su he's surprisingly... He's miniature. He, about he's a tiny, tiny goblin. Yeah. Right, right now, we're on a mission for... Lord Saver, uh, Slat. <clears throat> oh my god, your trashy voice. Yeah, that's uh, my guy. That's my guy. That's <laughs> my guy. Am I gonna have to Photoshop Danny maybe. DeVito green? Help us, out, help yeah. us out on this mission. We'll, uh, we'll put in a good word for you when we meet Slat again. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, i really just been, you know, I've been trying to get oh. back into my kids' lives. They, they have a struggling bar in, in uh, the Hive. God. It's been a strange group of friends. What, what, what's it called? Yeah. Uh. Yeah, what's it called, Santi? What's it called? It the oh, what's it called? <laughs> Alright, hold on. Oh hold my on. god, Santi, I, I fucking... forgot what the bar is called from all it's, Is it a patties? Santi, I fucking found what the uh the goblin, what your character looks like. <laughs> yeah, it's Patty's Pub. <laughs> Patty's Pub? Yeah. It's called Fatty's Flub. It's over in the it's over, <laughs> it's over in the hive. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not bad off the top. Wait, dude, there's literally an image of Danny DeVito in a movie called The Troll. Oh, wait, wait. you gotta pay the troll toll if you want to get that boy soul. <laughs> wait, you gotta pay the troll toll to get into this boy soul. <laughs> that's very familiar. A lullaby I used to sing to my children when they were young. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't. It didn't help them get to sleep, but, but I, I found it very amusing. <laughs> hey kids, you, you want some PTSD? <laughs> I, well, He's so different than that first image you sent me. <laughs> I know. I I just looked up goblin with two pistols. <laughs> 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 what is his original image? <laughs> it's just a normal goblin. <laughs> it's a goblin. It's like a sharpshooter goblin. I was like, Shane, I want to make a sharpshooter that's going to be Danny DeVito as a goblin. <laughs> it's just a normal goblin. I started last. <laughs> it's so different. How far so, have we yeah, come? I'm, I'm Brank the Blaster. <laughs> I started blasting. <laughs> These are dark times. Well... <laughs> Well, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna pat Grank on the back and, uh... Oh, wait, how many limbs do you have, the by sunset. the way? Do you have hands? Arms. Oh, uh, I, I, I would assume we haven't reached the mission place yet. I would assume he, had, he would have all of his limbs at this point. Okay, that's fair. Well, let's say his, his hands are just nubs. He doesn't have fingers. <laughs> they're, they're starting to grow back. <laughs> little, little finger nubs. Uh, Billy and Ballas, do you have any inspirational speeches for us? Well, Frank, you remind me of my old pappy. You're short and stout, just like you. Did he smoke crack? <laughs> it's, it, it works quite a lot, actually. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, like his eyes, he'd always yell. I... You be my dad. <laughs> I think his name was uh, 
Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Gany! So, I don't know. You remind me a lot like him. But... I appreciate that. It's, uh... It's nice. Well, you can join us. You can ride right here on my car. <laughs> There's enough room for you. On your what? Excuse me, do you say... Cart? <laughs> No, 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 say it with the accent. Say it with the accent. No, I, I definitely heard that too. But, let me jump in your cock. Joe, Joe, you saw. Oh, that's. A, I thought that was his other character. No, I'm clean on the voice now. This, this, remember, he can't talk because he's melted his face too many times with fire. <laughs> I'm not gonna try to say that again. But. Yeah. Shay Cock and Great Chinchai Fest! Colleen, can you, uh. None of us can translate what, uh, Grim has to say. Do you, by chance, know. Half face melted off, Paul? <laughs> I just stop listening to anything that comes out of his mouth. <laughs> I only said before I sing to say. Jesus Christ, what the fuck are you? You're not a goblin. No, believe it or not, he actually <laughs> is. I'm the biggest holy goblin of fire oh you ever God. see. <laughs> I got a cousin Why with the affinity for fire, fire but fire that. does not have the affinity <laughs> for him. It, Grim, as a display of his power, is going to like start to like just juggle fire in his hands, which is like you can see the skin underneath. Like, you, you know, the part of the fire magic of not burning yourself is something he hasn't learned. Gilbert backs up. I'm on fucking end. I will fucking end you all. I will fucking good shit. <laughs> Rick, watch this. Now he's gonna set himself on fire. <laughs> he does that a lot, actually. Yeah, his fucking arm is just like starts like fire uh, catching on fire, and he starts patting it out. He's like, ah, I have no nerves. I can't feel pain. Physical pain. He can still feel emotional. <laughs> the most important pain. <laughs> Sticks and stones may break my bones the words hurt me forever. <laughs> well, yes. We still have a couple clicks out before we get to our destination. Who's Shall playing we? that Vietnam music? <laughs> 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 Got a couple <laughs> clicks left. <laughs> <laughs> now the most important question though. Who is gonna wheel William or Billiam? Whatever the fuck. Um, I will is. wheel William Billiam up, up any it is, hills. It is fully powered. <laughs> By what? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, okay. Matt Mercer. All right. It's powered by so, Matt Mercer riding in wheelchairs. Propelled by his farts. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Just as we're walking God. along. I, I was gonna say, I've been coming to, up with some nicknames for you guys. They're still a work in progress. Let's hear them. All right. I swear to everything. If we can workshop it right here, here, right now. Well, I hold on. I I kind of forgot some of your guys' names, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear him furiously click through the. Uh... uh. If my nickname is Wheels. Is he able to even I'll personally see? Fight you. I, I can only I, see trashy. I can only <laughs> see mine. Yeah. Fight you. Oh, what a shame, John! What a fucking shame. I've been gone when half of them have been introduced! What a shame. Uh, I am Billiam Bolas. Alright, Billiam Bolas. Your nickname is Carbon. Grank. You're gonna be Trash Man. Uh. 
dude who sounds like a Kermit the Frog, you're gonna be Kermit. <laughs> <I'm> creative. <laughs> ah, you uh, what what was it? Mark, Mag, what, what was your guys' name? Joe. Joe? Grim. Grim. <laughs> Marge. Marge. His name is actually Marge. That's his real name, actually. Tell me! You're gonna be zombie. And I will be your trepid leer, Eagle One. <laughs> Who voted you to the top spot? <laughs> You're not even a goblin. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know that. I'm here, I'm, I'm here longer than all of you. Obviously, I'm higher rank than all of you. I find more wars than you, buddy. <laughs> I can walk on two feet, but most of the time. Well, I'm just innately better than all of you. You're I'm not even a goblin. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> John, stop metagaming. <laughs> <laughs> You see his ears? He has more ears than you. And they're stiffer than yours, too. <laughs> My ears are made of metal. <laughs> I'll show you something stiff. <laughs> I'm gonna whip out my dagger. Oh, oh. oh. oh alright. <laughs> Hold up, let me look at my inventory. <laughs> John is like the only person with an inventory. <laughs> I whip out my scimitar. Oh, oh. Whip out my scimitar. <laughs> I don't. I don't have anything else in my inventory. <laughs> Charlie has a wheelchair. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take off my leather armor. <laughs> Why does Charlie have cunning action? <laughs> the fastest fuck boy. <laughs> oh my god. to have you know that I'm definitely making Billiam an artificer. <laughs> so his cart is mobile. <laughs> he doesn't have to use his legs. <laughs> hey Joe, I just have a yes. question. This doesn't relate to my campaign anymore, but can I switch my character for tomorrow to be Sonic? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yourself! <laughs> I, no, dude, I, I love Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> why? I don't know, dude. I I don't know why. I've been going down like a Sonic rabbit hole recently. <laughs> <laughs> How deep does the rabbit hole dude, go? The Sonic rabbit hole is so deep. <laughs> it's fucked. It's so fucked, dude. It's just for pits of hell. <laughs> it is. Sonic uh, is the BBEG. He's going to be. He's the. Yeah. He's gonna be in the campaign. I hope you know. You guys are gonna kill Sonic at some point. That's Good. fine. So, or uh, cut it there. Yeah, we're just gonna cut it at me talking shit about Sonic. All right. So.